Välkomna till Grand Hotel i Stockholm och årets Polar Music Prize. Stickan Anderssons och Musikaliska Akademins internationella musikpris som i år delas ut för nionde gången. Och i år är det två verkliga giganter som belönas. Violinisten Isaac Stern som har spelat på all världens scener i över 60 år nu. Och rocklegenden Bob Dylan som har dominerat rockvärlden i 40 år. Här i vinterträdgården pågår middagen som bäst och ni ska förstås få vara med om den också. Men vi ska gå tillbaka några timmar i tiden först till i eftermiddags då kungen förrättade den högtidliga prisceremonin. Vi ska till Bärvalhallen och Camilla Lundberg. Heders majesteter, prinsessan Kristina från Magnusson, årets polarpristagare, The Lords of the Polar Music Prize, Isaac Stern och Bob Dylan. Heders excellenser, ledamöter av Sveriges regering, mina damer och herrar och alla musikens vänner, nära och fjärran. Ni är alla mycket hjärtligt välkomna till en av musiklivets verkliga höjdpunkter, utdelandet av polarprisen. 
On behalf of the board of the Polar Music Prize, I wish you all hearty welcome to this first Polar Music event of the new millennium. It is the ninth time we come together here in the Berval Hall to honor the laureates of the most prestigious music prize in the world, but also to listen to music performed by the most uh, well-known artists. So it's my pleasure to ask Maestro Manfred Honig and the outstanding Swedish Radio Orchestra to open our festivities with your, your Majesties, Princess Christina, Mrs. Magnusson, recipients of the Polar Music Prize, Your Excellencies, members of the Swedish government, right honorable ladies and gentlemen, guests and dear friends. A new millennium has just begun. In a world so dominated by numbers, quantities, numeric progressions, perhaps the announcement that the Polar Prize is today being presented for the ninth time will not create all that much of a stir. But the small number of prizes acquires tremendous weight from a roll call of recipients, which includes, for example, Gillespie and Lutuswavsky, Rostropovic and Elton John, Springsteen and Eric Erikson, Ravi Shankar and Ray Charles, and last year, Yanis Xenakis and Stevie Wonder. This year, today, violinist Maestro Isaac Stern and composer, poet, and singer Bob Dylan will be receiving the Polar Prize from the hands of His Majesty the King. Stikan Andersson, who created the Polar Prize through his generous donation to the Royal Swedish Academy of Music, Stikan Andersson wanted a meeting of chanters. Confrontation between them reveals new sides to the music, creates new ways of listening, seeing, experiencing. The Polar Prize, then, is something of a symbol for new ways of presenting music. But in order to encounter to, uh, in, <laughs> sorry, but in order for the encounter to be of good quality, through and through, each of the genres taken separately must have resources to be developed. Sometimes that sort of thing has to take time, and sometimes that sort of work is not even all that glamorous. The great American composer Charles Ives gave it as his opinion that beauty in music is too often confused with something that lets the ears lie back in an easy chair. In other words, beauty in music is not to be equated with easy listening. Instead, beauty can sometimes be something very serious. Sometimes we experience the miracle, the miracle of beauty. Each and every one of us does so, if only perhaps for a brief moment. The moment when everything seems to stand still round about us. It may be the second moment of Brahms' violin concerto with Maestro Stern as the soloist in just that recording. It may be Bob Dylan, it may be blowing in the wind. Music and music with words are also one of man's foremost expressions of his humanism, of his conscience towards his fellow beings. As a background to blowing in the wind, Bob Dylan who was about 20 at the time, said, 
I still say that some of the biggest criminals are those that turn their heads away when they see wrong and know it's wrong. As Isaac Stern has said, to perform, any machine can play better than a human, but only a human being can look at somebody and say, I love you. The citations for this year's recipients will be read out later, giving you the full story. One last thing before I finish. Talking of numbers, quantities, and numeric progressions, I wonder how long a queue made up of all Maestro Sturms and Bob Dylan's happy listeners and spectators through the years. How many times would such a queue wind round the globe? Dear prize winners, thank you for all you have created and are creating. Thank you. Vid Central Park i New York ligger Isaac Stearns studio. Här har han sin bas, men i snart 60 år har han varit på resande fot och spelat fiol i nästan världens alla länder. En ambassadör i musik. Han föddes i ryska Ukraina 1920. Men föräldrarna emigrerade till USA innan Isaac fyllt ett år och han växte upp i San Francisco. Han började spela piano som sexåring men bytte till fiol när han fyllde åtta. Sen dröjde det inte länge innan han och hans föräldrar förstod att han hade en mycket speciell talang. Han slutade skolan som nioåring. Han fick spela med San Francisco symfoniorkester som 11-åring och han debuterade som solist i New York som 17-åring. Att vara musiker är inte ett jobb, det är ett sätt att leva, säger han. Och att spela fiol, det är som att älska. In a way, yes, it is. Because there's the touch there's the sense of being together with something and finally the excitement of having discovered something very beautiful and you feel a little chill going up and down your spine as you play this little moment in Mozart or Bach or Beethoven or Brahms or Schubert or Mendelssohn or Stravinsky or Prokofiev, it doesn't matter who, but it's a kind of personal discovery that is yours at that moment. Och nu ska vi möta en ung svensk kollega till Isaac Stern som ska spela ett verk som är hans kännetecken. Serenad av Bernstein, ett verk som Stern uppförde för 45 år sedan.
Cecilia Silja Cousy, musiken Lena Bernström, ett av många verk som Isaac Stern lanserat. Det här var finalen ur Serenad, musik inspirerad av filosoferna kring Platon. Här den djupsinnige Sokrates och den fräck är Alkibiades. Efter den här hyllningen till Isaac Stern är det dags att lämna en plats för en tribut till Polarprisets Initiativtagare och donator Stickan Andersson. Jag tror att det är Agneto vi ser i Sopranstämman och Fridor i Altstämman i Radikon. Time. 
Ja, tack för den musiken. Radiokören och Tönno Kalljuste. Nu har vi kommit till den här polarfestens andra del som ska ägnas Bob Dylan. Vi kommer få möta två slags tributer och den första kommer precis som Isaac Stone att ledas av en svensk kvinna. I show myself off so I can hear you cry. What good am I? What good am I?
say your love I wish I'd never met you I'm sick of love I'm trying to forget you Clustered to me like moths around the flame, and if their wings burn, I know I'm not to blame. Falling in love again, never wanted to. What am I?
taste of poison I flood in the waters Where the home in the valley meets the damned dirty prison Where executioners' faces always well hidden Where hunger is ugly, where the souls are forgotten Where black is the color and the non is the number And I tell it that I'm thicker and speak it and breathe it Reflect it from the mountain so our souls can see it Then I stand in the ocean until I start singing Abdullen hade väntat sig denna hyllning. Now, I request His Majesty the King, the Lords Isaac Stern and Bob Dylan, Princess Christina and Mrs. Magnusson, Count Singer Professor Elisabeth Söderström and the Honorable President Daniel Burtz to come on stage for the award ceremony. is music. Maestro Isaac Stern has been awarded the Polar Music Prize for year 2000 for his unique consummate artistry, distinguished by a personal musicianship without compare. From a sensational debut in San Francisco in the 1930s, to the beginning of a new millennium, we find Isaac Stern as indefatigable as ever in the cause of international music. He has said, our responsibility is to continue the search for beauty and humanity. That is what survives. His patient and energetic commitment to preserving and developing places where music is played proves his uncompromising attitude concerning the humanistic power of music. No less important than his own musicianship is Isaac Stern's inspiring educational achievement on behalf of young people all over the world. He sees an obvious duty in transmitting to the young generation not only the skills he possesses, but also the joy and dedication with which music inspires him. Music for Isaac Stern is a gift to mankind. It has been so from the dawn of history, and the artists have a great duty in our age of machinery and computers to let it forever remain so. 
He says, any machine can play better than a human being, but only a human being can look at you and say, I love you. Past, present, and future are always embodied by Isaac Stern as artist and human being. To him, music is timeless. Music is life, and life is music. Maestro Stern, may I please ask you to step forward to receive the Polar Music Prize from the hands of His Majesty, the King of Sweden. Bob Dylan's influence. As a songer, singer, and songwriter, on the development of the 20th century popular music is indisputable. His achievements encompass almost four decades of constantly changing modes of creativity always innovative, but always based on American musical traditions and roots. Starting with folk music and reaching the heights of critical and public fame, he set aside the rules of the day, appearing no longer alone with his acoustic guitar, but in the company of a rock and roll band. It was a development that required both integrity and determination, and a move that cemented his role as one of the greatest rock artists of our time. Bob Dylan's ability to combine poetry, harmony, and melody in a meaningful, often provocative context has captivated millions in all age groups and in most cultures and societies. Through his modest, persuasive musical approach, he has demonstrated an impressive ability to question the most determined political forces, to fight all forms of prejudice, and to offer inflinching support for the less fortunate. Even those who might not have shared his views would find it impossible to argue against Bob Dylan's musical and poetic brilliance. Mr. Dylan, I'll ask you to receive the Polar Music Prize of 2000 from the hands of His Majesty, <laughs> the King.
Välkomna tillbaka till Grand Hotel i Stockholm och till 